What up folks, welcome back to my channel, Smoking and Grilling with me, AB. And that's right, today we grilling. Hey, listen, you seen the thumbnail, you already read the title, so you know, listen, this is gonna be like one of those uh, beginner type, you know, how to do ribs. You know what, we got this holiday coming up, uh, just super easy, not gonna do no competition or nothing like that. I'm just gonna show you guys how you can go get, get yourself some of these ribs. We are gonna learn how to trim them today. And listen, we not like again, we're not gonna do no competition. We just gonna trim them, get them on, and figure this whole grill thing out so we can go ahead and have some fun with our friends and family. So I don't wanna over talk it, so let's get right into this trim. Okay, now check it out. Look down here. This right here, this is what you call spare ribs, right? Listen, this is the cheaper version, and this is the way you go. When you do them St. Louis style, you paid for that, and that means they're a little bit more expensive by the pound, right? So I'm gonna open this up get these cleaned up, then I'm gonna put these out here and then we are gonna learn how to trim them. We gonna get them nice and square and we are gonna go outside and get that grill ready. Okay, we got it out, right? Now again, I'm gonna keep stressing this. This is not no competition or nothing like that. You know what I mean? No competition trim. We just wanna hurry up and get these done and get them on the grill so we can have that fun, you know, with everybody, right? So what I'm gonna do is, look, I'm gonna just leave this tucked under here like that. If you look, this right here, this is gonna be our square edge. What we're gonna do is when we end up, we're gonna have a perfect rectangle shape right here and that's gonna be our ribs. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make some trim. You see this right here? This not really gonna render down. Ain't no, not really, it's not. Unless you cook it a long time, by then your ribs will be done fell apart. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and get some of this off. Just some of the stuff that you can just grab, you know what I mean, and uh, go from there. And I'm gonna tell you something about taking this off. It can be addicting. Before you know it, you'll have this completely naked. You know what I mean, it won't have no fat. We gonna need some fat, but I just wanna get just whatever I can grab that just pulls up, just like you see here. This is probably getting ready to be my last, you know, cut. Look, real easy. I like this, now we are gonna flip this over. Then we are gonna look at this right here. Now check this out, this little skirt part right here, we are gonna cut this off too. So I'll just go ahead, just get it close to the meat as possible, and then make your cut. Here you just wanna run this just like you see like this. Real simple. Now look, this is good meat. I'm gonna tell you something. We are gonna set this to, a so to the side, that's all. Now, we got this. I'm gonna set this to the side. Let me get a little plate so I can save this. Now look, I got the square edge. It's right here, it's facing my body, right? And then in the left hand side, upper left side, you'll see that there's a bone. You'll see right here, look. This bone right here, look, we just gonna go ahead and cut that out. As I just said, we are gonna cut it out, right? So I'm just gonna cut it like this. And you can run your thumb around here, you know, down here, and you can just feel right here where you are gonna cut. Even if you do feel a little bit of the bone, it's really not bone, it's like cartilage. So we are just gonna take it like this. You know about that if you had them rib tips. So. We just go like this, and we save this part too. What I do is I put this in a Ziploc bag, then when I get enough of it, I go ahead and smoke these. Okay, so you can see how, how it's starting to come together, right? We square here, we rectangle. Look, we both of these edges right here is parallel, then we get down here, and then you'll see we got some meat down here that's hanging off the edge of my cutting board, right? Now look, I come in a little bit, I can do this, listen, I got more than enough ribs, you know what, but I'ma say, let's go ahead and just cut it about right here. Oh, and also look, you see this right here? Better trim it now. We'll just take this off now. This is just extra fat that we don't have to deal with later when we start doing our rib tips, you know? So I'll just take this off. Even though I'm getting ready to cut this off, why not get it off now? Now look, I came in, I can see this rib right here. It's kind of like short. I don't want none of this, this thin meat. I want it all cooked evenly. So I'ma go ahead and just cut it off right here. Right? We'll just cut it right down there like that. We got this, this is good meat, folks. We're just gonna put that over here. Look right here. You can see right here, I got this on this paper plate. Look, this is nice. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and remove that membrane, right? You don't wanna eat none of that chewy stuff. So listen, go ahead and get yourself a butter knife and what you wanna do is insert the butter knife. Easy, easiest way for me is, I go between the membrane and the bone on the end. And then I just like work it in there, pry it open. And then once I have enough to grab, I take a paper towel so that I can get a grip because it's gonna be like, you know, kind of like slippery, right? So once you got a good grip, you can just like pull it. And this one right here pulled just right. You can see it all, you know, in one motion. Now, that's what it'll look like. 
Now, what you want to do is you want to get yourself some type of binder. I'm just using French's uh, yellow mustard, right? You guys can put W sauce or whatever you want to put on there. I've seen people even put hot sauce on there. The binder is just so that the rub will adhere, you know, to your ribs. Now, what you see right here, and I want you to look at the thickness. Just copy that, put it on there. Don't be afraid. Make it thick. Flip it over. It's all about the repeat. Mustard and then rub and then set aside. Okay, so this is them, you know, side by side, St. Louis style, right? So now you can look up in the upper right hand corner, you can see got them rib tips ready to go. Okay, so, okay, we got our ribs ready. They rub down, that rub is soaking inside of the meat right now. So what we're gonna do is, let's just go ahead and get you started. Now, I have inside here my slowness here, right? You'll see this, got my water trough. This right here keeps this side for my, you know, my charcoal briquettes, right? Now, everybody's not gonna have no one of these slow and sears, I got it. So listen, you're gonna wanna get yourself one of these, you know, tin pans right here. Now, it's gonna serve two purposes. For me, it's gonna serve the purpose of catching anything that drips down in there, and it helps me with my cleanup, right? And then for those who don't have a slow and sear, it's gonna serve a double purpose. That's gonna catch whatever. It's gonna catch whatever, and then what it's gonna do is, it's gonna provide moisture, because you're gonna add water into this, and it's gonna keep moisture in your chamber. Now, you see that I have that trough, right? So let me just go ahead and add this with some water right now. I'm gonna do it right now. Next thing, you're gonna wanna get yourself one of these right here, one of these little wax tumbleweeds. Hey, these right here work perfect. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay right here in this corner. Check this out, and we're gonna go ahead and light this. Now, once you got your tumbleweed lit, go ahead and put your briquettes. You just wanna like fill it up. You wanna fill your whole, you know, that whole side up with some fresh ones. And then I, now I'm applying, you know, my wood, right? And I'm using pecan, you guys. Hey, pecan just goes great when you're making some ribs. You know, so I get those on there and I only go about halfway and then it's gonna light from the right, you know, snaking all the way to the left. Okay, look, my temp is up, everything is good. I'm getting ready to open this lid. I've already adjusted my, my vent, cause I know. I usually keep mine a little bit, like about a third of the way open, with it half, about a quarter open on the bottom, a third of the way on the top, and that'll keep me right around 350 degrees, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and open this right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take them and just place them like this. Now I want you to look at what I'm doing. When I place them, I kinda like push them in. You wanna like squinch them in, you know, squinch them together, right? Now I'm gonna take this one. We're gonna get it like this also. Because the way you do it like that and the way you cook it is the way they're going to turn out. So we just put them like this and we're going to close this lid and we're going to let them cook. Now look, one of the things I'd say, even on the back of my shirts, I say if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Meaning, hey, it's going to be just the opposite. you looking at this right here, you're letting a lot of oxygen in, in the inside and listen, you're going to get flame up. So we don't want to look at it as much, right? So we put that on the top, we adjust our vents, and what you wanna do is you just watch it, you'll watch the heat settle down, and you just leave it like that and you let it cook. I won't come back out here and look at these no more until after about one hour. Remember, put them on the grill, one hour will be the first time we take a look at them. Okay, look, check it out. Look, we gotta get ourselves a spritz, right? I went ahead and mixed myself up some, this is just some W sauce and water equal parts, right? Just enough to spray. I know from cooking these all the time, hey listen, I cook these so much, I know how it is. I know my grill. So listen, when you guys uh, start using your grill, you're gonna start remembering, oh yeah, it does this, it does that. So let's go ahead and look at it. I know it's gonna need a little spritz. Actually, I'm gonna bring it around here so you guys can see. It's another thing I like about having one of these spin grates. You can see, look right here, I'll take my finger. You can see it's starting to dry out right here. This right here is good. Uh, even so back this way. So let's go ahead. Let's just keep it moist, you know what I mean? We'll do like that, and then what I'm gonna do is, after I got this, you know, sprayed completely moist, and you can see it's really, really thick on the side, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, my tongs, and what we're gonna do is, we're gonna move this back here on this side over here. I'm checking right now, looking at my water level. My water level, I'm about, about halfway down. We still got some more time. I'll probably add some the next time we look at it. I'm gonna set another timer. And we're gonna set that timer for another hour. Then we're gonna come back, take a look at it, and see where we at. And the way you see it right now, look, this is the simple way. When I get done with it, you guys are gonna be making them like this all the time. And then if you want them fall off the bone, I'm gonna make another video that's gonna be fall off the bone for you. But this right here gonna keep the integrity. So when we bite it, mm, it's gonna tear away. Just perfect. Hey, see you in another hour. Now, 
after about an hour, about, that was really like another hour and like 15 minutes, right? I got myself a toothpick and what you wanna do is you wanna probe in between the bones and you check in to make sure you don't have no resistance and to make sure it's tender. And then another way you can check is when you grab them with the tongs and you can see right here, look, look at that bean. I don't want them to tear, but look at that bean. Then after I like it like that, then I just flip it over, super easy. After you flip both of them over and get yourself your favorite barbecue sauce, if you like barbecue sauce, and go ahead and coat them. Listen, they look good and they taste good with the barbecue sauce. Now, it's up to you how you want to do it. You just want to coat it and then we're going to, you know, close the lid on it and then we're going to go just like another 15 to 20 minutes. Let me show it to you again. Look at that right there, y'all. Let me bring it this way. You can see, look, it's starting to glaze, you know, and like caramelize on the top. So that's what we want. Now I'm going to go ahead and take them off. We're going to let them rest. I'm gonna get them set up so I can go ahead and cut them, and then we're gonna go from there. If these don't say backyard barbecue, I don't know what does. Look, I can let these, these been cooling for about, maybe about 12 or 13 minutes, right? I'm gonna go ahead and cut these. Now you can see the bones right here. You know what I mean? Obviously in between there is the meat. What I wanna do is I wanna try not to get it. I'm gonna start by just cutting it right down the middle, like right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and try not to catch no bone. But look, I wanna show you right now. You can see that, you see that color? That right there, that's that flavor from that grill. Now, once I'm finished, you know, cutting these, look, I decide which one of these I wanna taste, right? You know what, we call that like chef's choice. Anyway, look, this one right here was like screaming my name. Look at this right here. You can see just how juicy it is. You can see how flexible it is. Hey, this is the right texture. Hey, hands down for a backyard barbecue, nobody can tell you you're not a pit master right here. All right, so look, I'm about to dig in. So I'm gonna hold it like this. Mmm. Man, this rub is right. It goes great with this barbecue sauce, you know? Mmm. Only thing missing now is a plate of that potato salad and then barbecue baked beans, you know? Man, this is fire. I grill a lot, do a lot of different things, you know what I mean? Hey, listen, I, I tend to think that we just over, you know, just over complicate things. Let's just take it back to the basics. Let's talk about what we learned. Look, at 350 degrees, right? We went ahead and put some ribs, we trimmed them. You know what I mean? Then we got ourselves some St. Louis style ribs, right? Put them on a grill at 350 degrees. We flipped them twice, one hour one way, one hour the other, right? Then we kind of rotated them, you know, and then we added another 45 minutes. We checked it with a toothpick. Once we got that desired, uh, you know, that desired tender tenderness that we were looking for, hey, we was good with that, right? Then all we did was flip them upside down so we could see the back, you know, the back of the ribs. We went ahead and coated them with our favorite uh, barbecue sauce, which I use my own. Then we flipped them over, we coated that side, then we let it set to caramelize, you know what I mean? So what did we go, what, another 20 minutes or whatever? Hey, listen, but this is all about, let's have some fun. You know, everybody enjoy this, this holiday that's coming up. You know what, super easy, put you out on the grill, you're not running back and forth inside the house, and it's gonna be just like super easy. So, listen, if you're new to my channel, let me just take this time to say, hey, thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe and tell everybody out there there's a channel that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And those of you guys have been watching me for a minute, I just want to say thank you, really thank you to everybody, and I'm out of here. Peace.